let's illustrate the basic theorem with a simple example. Um, this is a, a complete lattice. Well, it's a finite lattice, so it's a complete lattice. Uh, the basic theorem tells us that we can build a formal context whose concept lattice is looks the same. Well, one easy way to build a formal context with this property is to take all elements of this lattice as objects, all elements as attributes, and uh, uh, as the incidence relation between objects and attributes, we can take uh, the relation from the lattice. But we're going to do it in a little bit smarter way. So let's look at which of these nodes are supremum irreducible. Well, F is not supremum irreducible because it's a supremum of C and D. And C is also not supremum irreducible because it's a supremum, it's the supremum of A and B. All other elements, except for the top and the bottom, are irreducible. So you cannot uh, represent E as the supremum of any subset. Because if you look at elements that are smaller than E, these are C, A, B, and 0. And the largest element there is C, and it doesn't cover E. Um, it's, there's a unique largest element in this set. Uh, well, if you look at elements that are below F, C, D, A, B, and 0, you have, we have two elements that are larger than all the other elements in this set, but that are incomparable. Uh, and so their supremum is F. And that's, therefore F is reducible. But E is not reducible. G is not reducible. Not supremum reducible. Uh, D is not reducible. And so are A and B. So the basic theorem tells us uh, that uh, the set of elements in our lattice labeled by objects must be supremum dense. And therefore, it must include all elements that are irreducible. Because from a supremum dense set, you must be able to reconstruct all elements of the lattice using supremum. And you're not able to reconstruct supremum irreducible elements from any subset of the lattice. So we need to take all these elements, A, B, uh, D, E, and G as objects in our context. Now, what about attributes? Attribute label um, irreducible, infimum irreducible elements. So, which elements are infimum irreducible? Well, E is infimum irreducible, F is infimum irreducible G, uh, but not C and not D, because C is the infimum of E and F, and D is the infimum of F and G. B is the infimum of C and D, so we don't need it as an attribute either, but A is indeed infimum irreducible. If we look at all, all elements that are bigger than A, we'll get C, E, F, 1, and uh, we can't represent A as, a, as, as an infimum of any of them. So the attributes of our context are these four elements. It's A, um, E, F, G. Now the basic theorem says that we should make the incidence relation such that um, an object has an attribute if and only if the corresponding element, the, the element corresponding to the object is less than or equal to the element corresponding to the attribute. So let's, less than or equal to. So let's say at, whether we should put across here. Yes, because A is less than or equal to A. So we put across here. A is also less than or equal to E. So we put across here. A is less than or equal to F across here, but not less than or equal to G. You can't go from A to G mm. if you only go up. So we don't put across here. 
for B. B is under, not under A, but under E. It's under F and it's under G. D is under F and G. E is, uh, well, it's kind of under itself. So E is less than or equal to E. And that's it. And G, well, the same for G. G is less than or equal to G. Now, if we build the concept lattice of this formal context, we'll get the same, the same lattice. Let me draw it here. But with different labels. So we label, we use object labels. Let's say label this node with A as an object, this with B as an object, uh, this one with D, this one with E, this one with G, and these are our objects. And for attributes, we put A here, we put E here, we put F here and G over here. And you can check that this is indeed the concept lattice of this formal concept, of, of this formal context. Now let me describe a simple pr procedure that can help uh, check whether a line diagram of a partially ordered set is uh, the concept lattice, is the line diagram of the concept lattice of a given formal context. So this procedure, it uses the basic theorem and it can help you discover errors in the pictures of concept lattices. So, a line diagram well, it corresponds to corresponds to the context GMI in the sense that it's uh, uh, the, the line diagram of its concept lattice. If the following conditions are satisfied, well, first, it must be uh, a correct lattice diagram in general. So the set that it shows is indeed a lattice. It's not possible that you have something like, like this, for example. Because here, uh, there's no infimum for these two elements, for instance. Um, so the set shown by the diagram must be a lattice. There must be a supremum and infimum for every element, for every two elements. The second property is that exactly one node is labeled uh, by each object. And let's call this node gamma of G. Well, we know that gamma is a mapping from G, the set of all, all objects, to L, the set of all elements of our lattice. And for this reason, every object corresponds to exactly one element in the lattice. And so there's only one node labeled by G for every object G. It is possible that um, a node in a lattice is labeled by two objects but it's not possible that the same label occurs twice. And this is not a counterexample to what I've just said, because here, this G and this G are in a, in a way different. So this G, the yellow G, is a, a, an object 
while this rows g is an attribute. Okay, so similarly, exactly one node, which will denote by mu of g, of g, oh, sorry, of m, is labeled by each attribute m from our context. And again, for the same reason, because mu is a mapping from the set of attributes to L. The basic theorem tells us that uh, the set of elements labeled by objects must be supremum dense. And this means that it must include all supremum irreducible elements. For this reason, every supremum irreducible element must be labeled by an object. It may be labeled by two objects, that's okay, but it shouldn't remain without a label. And similarly, every infimum irreducible element is labeled by, by an attribute. So let's look at this lattice. Uh, this element is both supremum irreducible and infimum irreducible. So it's like it has an attribute label and it has an object label. This element is only infimum irreducible and therefore it must have an attribute label. So it's labeled by F. But it's supremum reducible. It's uh, the supremum of these two nodes. So it doesn't need an object label. As for this node, it's both supremum reducible because it's a supreme, it's the supremum of A and B and infimum reducible because it's the infimum of E and F. So it doesn't need any label at all. It might happen that it has a label, but it doesn't have to. Okay. And the last condition that we have to check, it just comes from the basic theorem. GIM if and only if the object labeled by G is less than or equal to the attribute, uh, to the node labeled by M. So the object G has an attribute M if and only if the node labeled by G is below, is less than or equal to the element labeled by M. If you have this, then your line diagram is a correct representation of the concept lattice of your formal context, GMI.